Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I would like to share with you exactly what I learned on my longest training run to date, 71 kilometers. So basically what I've been doing in the past months is applying my Ironman fitness to ultra trail running, something that I've always wanted to do. I've always seen ultra trail as the epitome of like adventure sport. So basically movement in nature. So I've been hard at work trying to train for these really grueling events. If you've seen the 50k video, you saw that I did a very short pivot into ultra trail, but now I have been training basically September, October, November for my next event. The next event that I'm gonna do is gonna be a 100k run. Doin Tanon by UTMB Elephant 100k here in Chiang Mai in the Doi Sotep National Park. This is gonna be a really hard event, possibly the hardest event I've ever done in my life. It's gonna be 95 kilometers with almost 6,000 meters of elevation gain on really, tough terrain, deep jungle, really steep climbs, and I'm really looking forward to it. But to say that I'm daunted by it is an understatement. So here we come to this video. The reason I'm making this video is to share with you guys things that I might have learned, mistakes that I've made, in order for you, if you decide to take on such a challenge, to maybe gain some insight, some knowledge, and something that you can apply to your own training build towards an event like this. Let's go check out how this session actually went, what went down here in the beautiful mountains next to Chiang Mai in the Doi Step National Park. Let's go. Hey guys, what is going on? Today I'm gonna to be doing the last really big long run before the 100k I'm signed up for. It's gonna be on the 9th of December. So today is three weeks out. I arrived in Thailand 10 days ago, 11 days ago, but I was sick, I had COVID, unfortunately. So I had to take one week off training, completely full off training, but it resolved itself really quickly. And now I'm back on track. I'm doing this session one week late. So today the session is gonna be uh, anywhere between 60 and 70k I will be happy with on the trails of the race I came here for that basically to get accustomed to the heat and to train on the race course We're leaving the hotel right now. We're gonna do a slightly different route from the race course from the beginning So we're going up to those step and then from there It's gonna be like roaming around the mountains around here Chiang Mai is a city that borders mountains that go up to 1600 meters It's absolutely sick for trail running also for cycling today. We're gonna explore a bit So it's gonna be a long really long day Probably gonna take a whole day. I'm gonna take it really easy. Not looking to do any speed work or anything, just to cover ground and to see what it feels like. I have the full uh, race pack on, complete gear, pretty heavy. I have a bunch of nutrition with me. I also have a big camelback bladder. There might be some spots where there's absolutely zero refuel. That being said, it's time to start running. Let's go. Five k in, made it to the Deutsche Step Trailhead Monks Trail, and from here it's going to be four k straight up, six hundred meters of elevation. Poles are out. It's a very famous trail. Every day there's a lot of people out here, hiking, running. And it's pretty cool. Definitely good training. We are around seven k in, made it to the first temple up the climb, Wat Pha La. Beautiful sunrise, sun is coming up. And man, this trail is dope because you get all the little Buddhas and stuff when you go up. I mean, how sick is that? Now the climb gets really steep. So one section, uh, we're gonna meet the road. Then we're gonna cross the road, go straight up again. The lead up in training was increased volume, increased kilometers run, increased time spent running, increased elevation per week to get to the point where I could do the longest run possible basically. In reality, in the beginning, I thought that I wasn't gonna do anything past 50 kilometers. I'd already done the 50K and I thought that would possibly be enough for this event. But the more I looked into it, the more I researched, the more I asked people who are way smarter than me, way fitter than me, and have done a lot more ultra trail events than me, it seemed reasonable to try and squeeze in one longer run, longer than 50K. A concept that I've seen floating around on Facebook groups, etc., is to have one week in which you approximate the whole distance of running of the event. So basically a week in which you run at least 100K. This final long run was the final run of this big week. In this week, I covered 114 kilometers with I think 6,000 meters of elevation gain. So basically I did in one week what is going to be required on one day. And on top of that, the final session, so the long run was 
covering approximately 70% of the distance of the event. You have one week in which you cover the whole volume at least and the whole elevation and the final big session covers 70% of the race distance. This I think is doable for 100k, I think it's also doable for 50k. Also, this was present in my training plan. I've been following the ultra marathon training plan from Motive and in the final big run day, it said either a five hour run or a 50K race or a 50 mile race. So I wasn't gonna do a race because I saw that in a race, the intensity is really high, which is very good actually for going past the limits and actually it is very good for training. But I saw that it really took a lot to recover from, not so much in the legs, but more over like the whole general fatigue that I got from the 50K and going really hard in the 50K. I could feel it for many weeks after that. So I decided to do something that was as close as possible to 50 miles, basically, but in training. The other reason I decided to do it was that I came here to Chiang Mai to train and to get adapted to the heat, but especially to train on the race course. So I had access to the trails, the trails are already marked. So I decided to do this last long run, approximating basically what the race course would be. This is where the poles really come in handy. Like, this is really, really steep. Ooh, what is this? At Deutsche there was a massive celebration for first year university students. Uh, I stopped there five minutes to refuel because this section that I'm tackling now, there's literally nothing. No cities, no markets, nothing. It's like this. Here I would like to give a couple of considerations in why you would want to do and what would be some potential drawbacks from this. So the positives of doing such a long training run are of course, getting used to the effort. Doing such a long run in training can be very beneficial in my opinion, just to get used to going all day to what would be an ultra type effort. So heading out before dawn and getting in after sunset. This I found to be incredibly beneficial. After having done this training session, I found this to be the most beneficial thing. And the second reason I think doing such a long run can be beneficial is to see what problems can arise. Things that we might have never even thought about. So for instance, chafing, I had to deal with chafing or gear issues or any other thing that will happen along a 70 kilometer training run is just a way to see what could happen during the race so that you basically don't derail your race for things that you could have tried in training. We've been going out here in the jungle for five or six kilometers and it's really deep deep jungle so I don't know what I've got myself into being alone here animal wise and everything so far the trail is pretty runnable to be honest now there's a little sharp climb and then a big descent uh, but yeah it's beautiful and dare I say a bit chilly it's not hot at all it's early morning and being that it's basically all inside the forest it is very cool the trail is already marked and being out here man it's just it's so amazing Check this out. Whoa. Okay, one more climb and then big descent. The potential drawbacks from doing such a long run in training are the potential for injury. So I decided to do this really long run because I had zero injuries. I, I was feeling great. I didn't have any problems. If I had had any type of niggle or something like that, I would not have done such a long run. I would have done maybe 50K, but I would have kept it within the range of what seemed reasonable. So absolutely, if you're dealing with any injuries or anything like that, I would not advise doing such a long training run. The second reason why you might not want to do such a long run in training is the time for recovery. So the time for recovery from an effort like this can be pretty long. So some people advise against doing such a long run in training because of this. I would say this is very good advice. The recovery aspect is incredibly important, especially in a thing that taxes our legs so much and in general our system. The one thing I will say is just how I approached it personally, which I think worked, and that was to keep the intensity extremely low. You know when they say zone two on the bike? Well, this was truly a zone two run, as in I basically never went into zone four, never. Even on the climbs, I took it really easy because the only thing that I wanted to do was to cover a lot of ground, get 
fatiguing my legs, but I didn't want to like go hard. I will keep going hard for race day. And in fact, I didn't really take a lot of time to recover from this effort. It took me some time for the legs, but in general, I wasn't feeling that tired. So definitely the recovery aspect is incredibly important and doing such a big session can take a lot out of us. So being smart with the intensity in order to keep the fatigue to a minimum, I think can be very beneficial. summit is done so this is kind of like the first third of the race done and now it's a big descent and then some flat so today I'm gonna to be taking it really really easy on the descent zero risks just want to complete a lot of miles today is also about testing out all the gear for the race so I have my camelback trail running backpack on it's the apex pro incredibly roomy I think it's 12 liters has a ton of pockets in the front testing out also the running poles I think that basically I can't do without anymore after the first experience with the 50k that was really traumatic and now I always use running poles whenever I'm doing something that has a bit of climbing and descending and I love them absolutely these are Aonigia collapsible running poles aluminum version and they fit inside the quiver that the camelback backpack has so that's definitely a plus the quiver is so helpful just to stash the poles away when you don't need them so I have that Apex Pro filled with a waterproof rain jacket in case of rain. I have a change of socks, uh, some calf guards if I want to change socks because maybe they get wet or something. Then I have all the mandatory equipment, so the survival blanket, the spork, the bandage for strapping, wrists, ankles and everything. Then I have two soft flasks for water or drinks. One water reservoir, two liter and a half. I filled up to one liter and a half. Then I have this camera to film and my Insta360. And then I have a running belt, always by Camelback. And it's super cool because it has a front pocket that is waterproof. So you can put your phone in there and it won't get wet or soaked. Because here it is uh, not hot, but it's fairly humid. So that's definitely a plus. Okay, well, let's keep on descending. I think that's where we came from all the way now we are at this lake and next we go there and I think we come back on this ridge up on this ridge over there up there and then back on the other side okay so the first big climb is done and the first big descent also. It's pretty steep in some points, like really, really steep in some points, but it's good. Like it's technical, but it's uh, it's doable. Compared to, for instance, like Doi Trail, which going down is a nightmare. This is uh, not like that. It's a bit easier. Now I got this uh, pretty little lake after kind of like a flat section. Now we have a bit of road, having a little ice cream break. Then I'm gonna start running again. And then we'll head back over the mountain for another big second climb and back to Chiang Mai. Let's go. Man, I just ended up face first in a huge spider web right in the middle of the trail with the spider in the middle. I looked up and I saw him. Still feels like he's on me, but hopefully he's not. Ooh. So this part really looks and feels like Australia, maybe near Melbourne or Adelaide, that kind of vibe of a forest, red dirt. It feels kind of dry actually. Oh, 30K in and it's almost time to head back to the other side of the mountain. Let's go. Still here running in the jungle. This bit is actually pretty nice. Fairly flat, a couple of steep, really steep but short parts. But the rest is really cool.
วัสดีครับเดินทาง How open ถอดสิ up โอ้ขอบคุณครับ Man, was I happy to see that, dude. The last like three, four kilometers was really, really deep in the jungle, and like it was kind of like oppressive jungle, like super, super close to you, full of plants, full of having to bushwhack through stuff. Seeing the dogs, seeing the dude with the motorbike was welcome change, to be honest. That was definitely something that would not recommend doing. It's too dangerous, I think, for like wildlife and that kind of stuff. I mean, maybe not, but didn't feel great, to be honest. Now a bit of downhill, and then we have one big climb. Up back to the Doipui Peak. Let's go. Okay, so we are 37k in for today's run. We started the second monster climb back towards Chiang Mai. It's 6.3k or something like that, with around 1,000 meters of elevation in the forest. So far, so good. Starting to feel it, to be honest. But that's why I'm here to train for these moments. And right now, the only thing that I have to do is just keep going, not think about it, and just keep going. And just get to the other side, eat, drink, and keep my head in the game. In all the events I've done before, I've always felt like this around this exact moment, and then I always get a second wind in a while. So I just have to hang in there and wait for the second wind to come. Legs climbing, feeling good. So let's go. I don't think from this video you can understand how steep this climb is, but it is so steep. Folia total. Oh. Man, the climb, the last climbs were absolutely brutal. Especially the last descent plus the last climb that was in, in the middle of the jungle it was absolutely terrible. Dark, in the shade, super slippery, super steep. But now that's over. We are still heading up. We've got like 30 meters more left of this climb. And then we're gonna take a shortcut and head to Doipui instead of following the route of the race. So then I can descend down Doisutep and go towards home. So far so good, feeling kind of like overall tired from the week and uh, from from today basically probably didn't eat enough but it's all good legs feel surprisingly good actually still can run a bit still uh, can climb i can climb for days to be honest so yeah let's get on with it and finish up this session let's go CK in, best part of the day. Feels like being in the Pacific Northwest. It's absolutely insane. So beautiful. Woo. Sunset time, 60K in. Last little tiny climb. And then it's all downhill. Oh, let's. Get it done. Okay, we are out here on the road, headlamp on, jacket back on. And we're gonna do the final kilometers. I think they're just gonna be on the road because I'm really fed up of being in the jungle alone. It is absolutely not safe, to be honest. So, let's see. We are in uh, Doi Pui. Now we're heading down to Bubing Palace, then Doi Sutep, and then down. Let's go. Here in Chiang Mai now it's winter and you can really feel it, it's like really cold up here. 1,600 meters of elevation, it's pretty chilly. 
made it to Deutsche Temple and I'm doing one minute walk and the rest of the kilometer run. Downhill, easy, I'm not trying to cause too much damage. But I am pretty toast, I must admit. Let's hope this brings me back to life. So I got up and I started heading back down again. And I just realized I made some terrible mistakes right now. Because A, I sat down. No, sit down, first thing. Because my legs now feel like lead. But most importantly, even though it's not really cold, I got an ice cream and that is really a no-no because I got up and I literally felt like I had a fever. It was so cold. So definitely something that I won't do. So now I got this corn on the cob. It's warm, it's really nice. And hopefully this will bring you back to life. I'm walking one kilometer now and then I'm gonna check out what happens in a minute. Okay, so we are at 72K and the session is over basically. I just want to go above 70K. Right now I'm just run walking, I'm just moving basically. And I'm trying to understand what it feels like to mess up. So get really cold and then try and come back to life. So right now I feel hot, I feel better. I could probably go a lot longer. But I'm gonna stop here because the objective was to get 100 plus kilometer a week. And we got spread out in four sessions, including today, we got 114 kilometers and more than 6K of vert. So very soon I'm gonna call it. Let's get to the most important lessons that I learned during the session. Intensity. Intensity is incredibly important. Keeping the intensity low, especially in the beginning, is something that I believe can really help to, to still feel, let's say, fresh, being able to still run in the last parts of the session. This is not easy to do because when we start out, it always seems like we're going too easy. But trust me, when you get to the 39, 40, 45 kilometer mark, the fatigue really starts to set in. So this is something that I'm gonna do on race day also. My race plan is gonna be very different from the 50K. I'm not gonna go out all out and I'm gonna keep the effort on the clients at a high aerobic effort. So possibly staying in the upper zone two range and trying to go as little above that as possible. The second thing I'm gonna do is the downhills. Downhills are incredibly draining on the quads. I actually got a little too excited, maybe because I was filming, maybe because I felt great. I took the first downhill pretty hard, to be honest, and it really torched my quads. I could feel that my legs were fatigued, possibly even because of the, all the volume that I'd done during the week before. But in any case, on race day, I'm gonna take the first downhill easy. The objective for race day is gonna be to basically get to the 50 kilometer mark, feeling still fairly good, as good as I can feel. Eating, fueling, and nutrition. So basically I went out on this training run and there were not really a lot of aid stations. I had to rely on kiosks, mini markets, and places like that. And what happened is I didn't fuel enough. I could really feel that I was bonking. Anywhere past, let's say the 60K mark, I wasn't feeling great. And I believe that is partly due to not eating enough throughout the day. Maybe not as in calories, but maybe not having it spread out as well. So that basically I had maybe some long stretches where I didn't eat, and then I would eat a lot in one spot. And that slowed me down. It made me a bit sluggish. That is a big thing that I learned. Uh, eat consistently throughout the effort. Start in the beginning, start with breakfast, and then start with at the beginning of the effort, and try to keep it as consistent as possible throughout the effort. Uh, I gotta say, this is a really calorie consuming activity, so I probably underestimated how much I needed to eat in order to feel good later during this training session. So definitely I gained some insight in how to deal with nutrition during this training run. Another big lesson that I learned was during the final stop that I did, basically I was at the end. What I did was I sat down to eat an ice cream and some fruit. And this was a really bad idea. Even though the weather felt kind of like warm, what happened was I sat down and my body started to cool itself, basically. It started to go into already recovery mode. On top of that, eating fruit and eating something cold really set my system into a shock. And this was something that if it had happened on race day and I didn't have access to something warm to eat straight after, it seriously could have impacted how the final stretch went. I was actually physically trembling. So what I would say is in the latter stages, and this is something that very probably everybody who's done a 100K or 100 mile already knows, is maybe some hot food can be very beneficial in order for this not to happen and to get some fuel in. And this is a really big lesson that I learned during this training session. Possibly the biggest one, because what happened was something that could have really impacted my race more than all the other things that I learned. Maybe the nutrition part also, but not in this like you can't go on physically. So definitely looking into hot food, 
towards the final stages of the race is something that I'm going to do on race day. Chafing also was something that I learned that I have to pay attention to, just like really long bike rides. I always take care of that. I don't know why I didn't do it on this run. For race day, I will definitely take care of that and look after chafing of the undercarriage, basically. Gear-wise, I think I really nailed it. I think the poles are extremely beneficial for something that is as steep as this race course. The backpack I'm using, absolutely awesome. So are the water flasks. And the water reservoir, I don't think I'm gonna run it on race day because there's, there are gonna be eight stations. Regarding shoes also, it went really well. Hoka Simpson 7, I really like these shoes. So yeah, regarding gear, I think this really long stress test ended with some really positive results. So there we have it. The biggest things that I learned from doing the longest run I've ever done in my life, 70 kilometers. Should you do this run in your preparation for an ultra? Only you can decide that. What I can do is share my personal experience coming from my background and knowing the things that I know and having them applied to this, to me, it made sense. I hope this video was helpful to you in your preparation of your ultra trail. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel to see how the race went and all the things that I learned on race day. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.